My name is Rafsi, welcome back to Slay the Spire Modded, where we have rotated the mod list yet again. Oh, hang on, did I not reactivate STS lib? I think I didn't reactivate STS lib. No, never mind, I do have it installed. Okay, I don't know what I'm missing here, because usually I have eight when I'm running this series, but eh, whatever. All right, so you can see by the coloration of the base screen, but also from here, that one of the mods we're going to be running is Infinite Spire by Blank the Evil, contributed to by the Evil Pickle, Red Dine number five, Greenius and Len. Uh, adds a new way to climb the spire forever for completing quests along the way, but be careful the spire will not be kind to those who do not give up. That doesn't necessarily represent what the mod does anymore, or at the very least what the mod will eventually do. Uh, it is kind of like a large content expansion that is very, very light on additional cards. Uh, there's also the Guardian mod from Michael Mayhem with Z Wolfies as well. Uh, adds a new playable enemy uh, enemy character. Well, it's a playable enemy character. Yeah, okay, fair enough. The Guardian. Uh, if you do like this mod and want to support Michael Mayhem, you can do so by checking out the multiplayer party game Sumo in early access on Steam. Uh, there's also credits to Freshbone Art for the Guardian fan art using the Galaxy Select, Kiot for being the god, uh, Rainer for Relic Preview Code, and special thanks to Keo, Rainer, Blank the Evil, Evil Pickle, Johnny Devo, Skyson, Chronometrics, Cobting, New Cows Go Moo, and the rest of the Discord community for all the help. Shout out to Rhapsody on YouTube. Thank you very much. Uh, for all the modded content creation and localization credit for KOR, Domzy and Tokbom, and ZHS, Rita Bernstein. ZHS and KOR. Oh, KOR is probably Korean. ZHS. I do not know what that language is. And also, uh, thanks to the Patreon supporters for uh, Michael Mayhem, which includes me, uh, and Alvin Sang. You can find Michael Mayhem's Patron if you're super interested in supporting the character modding that Michael Mayhem does in the description down below. Alright, let's launch in. Ascension 1. Yeah, Ascension 1. So there's probably been a fair few... Oh, dang it! Almost caught me out there. Uh, there's probably been a fair few changes to the Guardian since I last played them. Because, god, there were a lot of changes between like the first and second time I played. Uh, okay, so do I want to start hunting elites? Probably not yet. Mm, I'm actually at a low-ish ascension. I probably should. All right, now, what have you got for me? Transform card, eight... Whoa, all of these garbage. Uh, ooh, yikes. I'm kind of interested in throwing away the mode shifter, but that's just because I plan never to trigger it because I don't like losing 10 HP. Fine. Velvet Choker, that's... Mm, that could be a problem. At the very least, we have it so early on that we can build with it in mind. So backline has 24 HP, so I can actually only kill a frontliner. Do have to take 10 damage there myself, but I can curl up, throw three of it back at you, and easy kill. Power Potion, as well as Prismatic Beam, or Walk Guardian Quirl. So Prismatic Beam, deal four damage, and then repeat for each gem in this socket. There's also Guardian Quirl, which is three damage to four, three damage four times to all enemies, and upgrades to have a socket. I mean, this scales way better with strength than Whirlwind. Maybe I'm underestimating it a lot. That said, how do I get strength into my build? One of the ways to do so is Orb Walk. Gain two strength. Uh, tick is to gain one strength. It's volatile, but if you upgrade it, it removes volatile. Volatile and Tick, I should probably explain here. Tick, when this effect is triggered, whenever this card's... Sorry, this effect is triggered, rather. Whenever this card's turn is reduced while in stasis... So you can put cards into stasis. They are in stasis for their energy of the card plus one turns. But after that, they come into your hand and they are free to play. When this card leaves stasis, because it's volatile, exhaust it instead of returning it to your hand. So the upgrade removes that volatility, so you can just keep putting it back up there to get extra strength. That said, keep putting it back up there to get extra strength is probably going to take at the very least two cards to get active. Orb Walk and another card that stasis is it, right? But also... It's only one strength a turn. That's pretty low. 
I think Prismatic Beam is probably the correct choice here, but I do want to try Guardian Whirl. Taking Prismatic, though. Grumman Madly Shuffling. Stasis Strike. Okay, Ethereal deals 7 damage, places this card into Stasis. The doorstep has a socket. There's Gem Finder. At the end of each combat, at the end of this combat, rather, choose a common gem. I'm probably going to want Gem Finder if I have the ability to take it. Traumatic Entrance Ruby. I'll take Gem Finder here. Like, this early, I'm happy to take Gem Finder. Stasis Strike, do I want this? Yeah, I mean, it's just another thing for me to socket. So now that I have Gem Finder in the deck, I can get a ridiculous amount of gems pretty quickly. So probably what I'm going to want to do here... Upgraded to become zero cost. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, probably what I'm going to want to do here is just add a bunch of cards to my deck that benefit from having a bunch of gems socketed in them. Okay, so Venom, at the end of your turn, lose 14, uh, sorry, 4 HP and then re reduce the Venom by 1. When the Voidling dies, heal all damage dealt by Venom. While I'm in defensive mode, by the way, because I haven't explained defensive mode yet, so I should explain it next time I activate it. While I'm in defensive mode, anytime I play a card, I save myself 2 HP. I block for 2 HP, that is. Uh, add a common gem to your deck. We'll also check this first. Two vulnerable as well as two sockets. Yes. Uh, draw a card is actually a little bit bad for us, but Fragmented Gem is worse. So draw a card is a little bit bad just because it means that we're going to have a lot of times where we're trying to draw too many cards and we end up tripping over the Velvet Choker. Uh, fragmented Gem is obviously a lot worse though because it gives me a Shiv, which I am obliged to play if I want any value out of it. I'll take the Quartz. Let's trigger defensive mode here so that I can talk about it. Yeah, there's the curl up. Cool. So it's stasis strike, strike, then curl up at the very end here. Mm -hmm. So defensive mode. Defensive mode will retain for one turn here. Defensive mode grants three thorns, reduces damage dealt by 25%, and grants you two block whenever you play a card. You also, also have the thorns. Yeah, I literally had just finished saying that you have thorns when you do that. So whoops. Take my common gem. Ruby is really good. One temporary strength. It's possibly what I'm going to take here. Oh, wow. I actually have to make the selection right now. Okay. I've got to remember to try and pick up the card first because that's more important. Uh, Multi-beam. Deal five damage to all enemies X times. Tick. Increase the damage dealt by beam cards by two this combat. Upgrades to be X plus one times. Uh, we'll go with Guardian Well, I don't think we want to do like a beam-based build. I mean, there's nothing I can really do this turn, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I'll defend here. I really don't want to take that hit. So when we get to a rest site, we can throw these gems into the socketed cards, or the cards rather with sockets. We can socket the gems. Uh, and then that gem's effect is just attached to another card. Makes it real simple for us. Amber. Uh, gem accelerate the rightmost card in stasis. Interesting. It's also charge up, place this card into stasis. Tick, gain 12 block and 1 strength and it's volatile. It upgrades to have 1 cost, which actually is important because it having 1 cost means that it's in stasis for 1 extra turn, so it triggers its tick 1 more time. It's a weird way for that to upgrade, but it makes sense. Uh, I'll take charge up here. And then... Hmm. Quartz. Just so that I can draw towards good cards. I'll use a power potion in this fight. Construction form... Uh, probably stasis engine here is the only really impactful one. For every third zero cost card you play, gain zero, uh, gain an energy and draw a card. Don't want to wake up the enemy this turn. Yeah, we have Gem Finder and the Charge Up to play first. Okay. Eh, Stasis Strike, Strike. Worst opening turns. 
There are worse opening turns out there. Okay. So, definitely Twin Slam. Definitely Guardian Whirl. Let's definitely defend then. Could have played one more card. Damn you, Velvet Choker. Still a pretty good log villain combat overall. Stasis Strike comes back with a couple of attacks here. We should be great. That'll get it done. Beautiful. Uh, Blood Vial at the start of each combat. Heal for two HP as well as another random gem. Probably the Ruby there. All right. Never mind. I've got to make sure that I check this first. Emerald for momentary decks. Sure. And now we can... Finally get this socketing done. By the way, Infinite Spire has this quest log, which I really should have pointed out earlier. Uh, pick up Circlet, 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 Null, Null, and Dead Branch. Oh. Okay. Well, these these are things that you can't actually get naturally over the course of the game. So I think it's trying to say, you know, obtain this modded relic, this modded relic, but I don't have any of those modded relics. So... And nor those modded cards. So I'll just remove those. I get gold if I complete these, by the way. Alright. So this is free action to enhance. I really, really want Prismatic Beam to have two stuff in it. But the thing is, like, Prismatic Beam, I should benefit from getting strength before I play Prismatic Beam. Rather than benefit with Prismatic Beam. So it feels like I put both of the rubies into Vent Steam. And then both of the quartzes, maybe, into Prismatic Beam. Great. And then finally, we have the Emeralds. Just drop that in Stasis Strike. Gives me one extra dex every other turn. That's fine. Just remove five cards from my deck, by the way. So we'll take our money. And now I still have the ability to smith afterwards. Neat. Upgrade Vent Steam and it gets too weak and too vulnerable. That's really powerful. But if I upgrade Guardian Whirl, I get a socket in it. If I upgrade Charge Up, it works for an extra turn. Upgrade Prismatic Beam, it gets an extra socket. You know, I, I probably want to make sure that I upgrade things that get extra sockets first. Because I'm going to be getting a lot of gems from the gem finder with that end into the deck. Speaking of the gem finder that we've added into the deck. Okay, so 7, 7, 8, 6, 15, 21 total. So we use it against this Fungi Beast so that we're wasting as little damage as possible. Because this is still only a single strike away from dead. Yeah, actually it's that, then Vent Steam and Prismatic Beam for lethal. A common. Mm. So you actually can't skip this, by the way, if you open this selection. So if you don't want a common gem, you have to just not open the selection, I guess. Uh, a momentary dex. Because it's the, the ward and the shiv are both zero cost cards that I would have to play. It's going to be a problem with the Velvet Choker. I guess I take the Emerald here. And another vent steam to put more socketed stuff into. Wall pain to pump up upgrade to random skills. Damn it! Really wanted to, to hit skills that still needed socketed stuff. Okay. Momentary decks on that is fine. And get the Guardian Well upgraded. <clears throat> still 16 to all enemies, which is reasonable. Really reasonable, in fact. Solid first turn. Momentary strength and momentary dex, by the way, are exactly what you might expect. Uh, I mean, six to all enemies four times. That's lethal on the sentry in the front line. Yeah, I have to play the defend. At the very least, I'm fully blocked next turn. 
So I take one damage here, losing my perfect bonus. Ho hum. Alright, where's this lethal? Oh, that'll do! That will definitely do. <clears throat> More bank. Whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No longer works when you spend any gold at a shop, as well as another ruby. Yes. Gain two artifact is actually really interesting as well, because it means that anytime I gain momentary strength, that momentary strength is just kept. So, gaining artifact is really good for us. Hmm. Should I take it rather than the extra ruby right now? No. The ruby is too damn powerful right now. Specifically because I can socket it in something that is making enemies vulnerable in the vent steam. Let's get the charge up upgraded as well. <clears throat> Woo, gremlin knob. I'll probably use a power potion here. Exhaust the first status or curse draw on each turn. That never happens. At the end of your turn, place up to one card in your hand in stasis. Sure, I guess. The other one wasn't going to help me either, so this will have to do. Put a defend into stasis. Yay. All right, definitely did not need to use that power potion. Question card. Future card rewards have one or different card to choose from, as well as... No. Walker Claw does upgrade to have a socket in it, and we do have a lot of things giving us temporary strength. But the problem is, like, strength affects this card two times. That just means every point of strength is two on it. So a multi-hit does way better than Walker Claw. Because anything that says it hits twice, strength affects twice. So we're actually going to pass that one. Also, did not get a gem there. Wild. At the very least, that's immediately made up for as I am definitely going to get one here. Uh, probably courts out of those. Okay. I probably don't want another vent steam at this point. It's just a bit much. By a bit much, I mean way too much. By way too much, I mean it's still a bit much. Uh, at the end of your turn, accelerate the rightmost card in stasis with a turn counter of two or more. That's never going to happen. Just take the emerald then. Alright, so the emerald definitely goes into Twin Slam. And then drawing a card, I'm thinking probably goes on Vent Steam. That would have been another momentary strength if I had access to it, but I don't. Upgrading these to apply weak and vulnerable is a pretty important change in the deck to make, though. Hey, what up, Guardian? It's me, Guardian. <laughs> it's me, you. I'll have other opportunities to play Gem Finder later. I'll definitely have other opportunities. It is A-OK. -okay. Oh, man. This game sounds really loud to me. I don't know why. It's actually turned down for the sake of the main series. Not for the main series, sorry. For the sake of the series with Alexa. It really should be loud. Alright. Hopefully it's not blaring over the top of me right now. So, I think I do actually curl up here at the very start. And charge up. Vent and Stasis Strike. So I end up taking no damage here, and I've got my charge up ready to go. Woohoo! That's a lot of strength based damage right there. Thank you, Charge Up, for 12 more defense already. And then I'll just curl up at the very end of my turn, making you take some damage for trying to hit me. Ooh, draw a card. That's not defensive enough. Okay, so we will be taking damage this turn. There goes my perfect kill. If we got Prismatic Beam last turn, maybe we could have done it. 
right. Uh, add a card to your deck or add the three quest log. Add the three to the quest log. Multi beam, old coin, and remove five cards. Well, remove five cards is going to happen again, definitely. Multi beam, probably not. Stasis, time sifter, hyper beam, and gatling beam. Almost certainly none of these. You know, like, there's no sockets going on in any of these, and that's, like, very much what this deck does right now. Drawing extra cards and playing a bunch of zero-cost cards is obviously a bad idea with Velvet Choker. For that same reason, stasis cards aren't particularly handy. Uh, Hyper Beam... I mean, Hyper Beam is nice. It's just, like, a straight-up finisher. Uh, should I take it just as a straight-up finisher here? I think I should. Yeah. This gives us a lot more AoE. Evacuation plans. On pickup, lose two stasis slots and gain one energy at the start of your turn. So. The thing is, stasis strike and charge up are both in my deck, but how often are they going to interfere with one another? Pretty commonly? Pretty commonly. That said, they're not super impactful it's not like i need that to go off so i'm i'm fine evacuation plans for an extra energy is really powerful though <clears throat> all right maximum elite path is over here on the left it also has two midline rests it's always really nice so that i can socket some of these cards This is exactly the position where I can't play Hyper Beam as well, by the way. Would have lost my next turn. Alright, so... Stasis in progress? Oh, right, yeah, that's just saying that I can't play Charge Up because of that. Fair enough. I understand that. And I can kill the enemy... Yeah, I'm just going to use an explosive potion to kill the enemy this turn, saving myself 7 HP and, yeah, leaving myself more slots for other potions. Ooh! These are interesting. Apply one vulnerable to all enemies is really good because we don't have any of that at the moment. Now, the problem that exists in the deck at the moment is Guardian Whirl is the only thing I can socket that into, and Guardian Whirl is the thing that benefits the most from that. So I really want something else to be the trigger. Uh, yeah, I'll take the quartz as well. All right. Wait a second. I only just realized I actually have access to a bunch of vulnerability. Vent Steam. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. All right. Let's have Gem Finder out as well. Another Prismatic Beam or a Prismatic Shield would also be really good. Okay. Alright, Fear Potion. That was pretty good. Reroot. No, that's about putting things into stasis. I'm not going to want that. Oh my god, it keeps giving me the Aquamarine and the Fragments of Gems now that I can't use them. Abacus, whenever you shuffle your draw pile, gain six block. Art of War, if you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain additional energy next turn, as well as the Light Sheen Nut. Upon pickup, lose 25% of your max HP and start each combat with three regen. Three regen is really good when you have regen potions to stack it up, right? Because three regen by itself is six. Uh, five regen by itself is 15. But when you stack them, you get eight regen, which is eight plus seven, which is already 15, uh, plus six for 21, plus 15. So 36 instead of 6 and 15. Much more effective. I could just take the light sheen on here. I just don't think I need it, is the thing. So I'm thinking I might want to hold off. Uh, cards to remove from the deck? Probably, like, basically every strike. We've added nothing but aggression to this deck so far. This is actually, like, a really garbage shot for me. There's nothing here I really want. I don't want defensive mode because while I'm in defensive mode, I'm dealing less damage. And this deck is actually about just like straight up running at the enemy. Art of War. Art of War will never trigger for us. And we don't need the energy from it, even if it does. 
All right, that's just a really unfortunate shop. Let's hope we find a better one later. One of 20 cards to add to the deck? Sure. Okay, Polybeam Recover Temporal Strike. Reading the names of these isn't necessarily helping anyone. I can take the Multi Beam, and that will complete a quest for me, but... That's exactly how I feel about that. Uh, one of the things that I'm most interested in here is Citrine, a gem that gains one energy. Although I don't know if we need energy in this deck at this point. Still taking Citrine. Okay. Let's see what book we get here. Niri's Codex. At the end of your turn, you may shuffle one of three random cards into your draw pile. I was really hoping that was going to give me the Necronomicon so I could double play Hyper Beam and double play Guardian Quell. Although I don't know if double playing Hyper Beam with Necronomicon would actually end your turn. I suspect it might. The problem I now have is that Guardian Well, what do I put in it? Oh, I'll put Citrine in it. It effectively just lowers the cost of Guardian Well. Easy. Uh, then we'll Smith something to try and get an extra slot in it. Or upgrade Hyper Beam for the 10 extra damage so it's easier to use it to reach for lethal. More than happy to do that. Deal 12, uh, 10 damage. Damage is increased by 1 for each gem in all of your socketed cards. That's really powerful for us. Exploit gems. This is exactly what we want in this deck. I mean, not right now. I don't know why I took it right there. I want it in general. Okay. <sighs> Amethyst or Lenny's losing. No, we'll take Ancient Power here. Alright. Ancient Power. Gain one dex, add a random power card to your hand, it costs one less as combat, and the upgrade also gives an artifact, which is really neat. Stasis Strike doesn't even manage to go into Stasis. That's fine, though. I didn't want it there, ideally. While defensive, when defensive mode was removed, gain one strength for each turn it was active and gain two defensive mode. Sure. It's possibly just two strength for us. Great. Refracted beam, deal four damage three times, can be upgraded any number of times. Yeah, I'll take that as well. Just need ways to translate my strength into damage right now. Beautiful. I have so many multi-hits left in my deck. Yeah, I take none of those. Yep. This will get it done. Beautiful. Didn't even have to play my Hyper Beam. Did end up taking like 30 damage in that combat though. Rhapsody Co Mining Pick. Hell yeah. You can mine for two gems and up to three rest sites. Mm-hmm-hmm. Uh... With as many gemstones that litter the spire, it's hard to imagine anyone so unlucky as to have needed this pick to aid them. Not this run, friend. Not this run. Uh, another ruby? Still need cards to cycle them into. Right. I don't want to mine here. That just gains two random gems, and I'm not going to be using them yet. Uh, so it's another smith, definitely. Twin Slam does get another socket. So does Curl Up gets a single socket, so each of those are pretty good choices. Unfortunately, you upgrade first and then can't socket afterwards, so oh well. Choke a card. Every 15th card you play is played twice. I've got to try and make sure I keep an eye on that. Relic Sorter. Relic Sorter is the relic I don't have installed. I was wondering why I couldn't move that to the front. There's a shop later or an elite. I have to choose, unfortunately. None of that is useful to me. Not really, at least. Okay. So that's Ruby, and then Hyper Beam. 
And hell, we'll even gem find a defend. I don't play the hyper beam here. Sorry, Ruby and Twin Strike, rather. I don't play the hyper beam here because I don't have any artifact to prevent skip your next turn. So we just take a bunch of damage. Compile package would be nice because I'd be able to play all of the cards from it. But compile package gives you a package, a zero cost exhausting skill that generates three cards inspired by a chosen construct of the spire and reduces their cost by one for the combat. But it gives you a card and then that card gives you three other cards. So I've already played five cards and I haven't really used much of my energy at all. It feels like compile package is going to be a trap. I'm going to tra take it anyway though. Compile package, Ancients, Mass, or Shapes. So Ancient Attack, Ancient Power, and Ancient Construct. Ancient Attack and Ancient Power both add another card to my hand as well. So that's two cards played, six cards, seven cards. If I only play all of the cards from the Ancients, that's not good. Spiker Protocol is actually really good though. Massive Spikes is also really good in this combat. I'm going to make the enemy vulnerable. Use Prismatic Beam here. Defend one more time. I've got two more cards I get to play this turn. And the second card is played twice. Um, I'm going to Massive Bombs. And then double Group Slam for 80 damage. Massive Bombs just put a Time Bomb up here that will deal damage to all enemies when it exhausts, but somehow I don't think it's going to get the time to exhaust. Call it a hunch. Lantern, started combat with additional energy. Neat. And Prismatic Beam. Great. Another card to socket a bunch of stuff onto. That's exactly what I've been looking for this entire time. Add a common chart. Cards of the deck. Yep, Ruby. This old Ruby Rider is Ruby Riding alone. She's a sturdy, solitary stone. Double up on defense? Literally just to increment the Joker card, right? I probably use my regen potion here, though. Floating orbs is actually really good. The orb slam it adds to our hand is just a multi-attack for zero. Um, and that's actually going to be really, really handy for us. Oh, my God. Can I use Hyper Beam for lethal this time? I can. And we killed a Sneko, so we get a random relic. Pandagraph at the start of boss combat, table 25 HP. Great. Definitely didn't need the regen there, but no, didn't know that until until it was already too late. I think now I want to take bronze armor, because if I play bronze armor at the end of a turn, after I've gained like a bunch of momentary strength, then I just keep all of it. I'm going to go to the shop. I have 700. I have to spend it. Ooh, membership card. 50% discount on all products. Yes. Uh, deal 12 damage. Perform two times the following with two sockets in it. Upgrades to have three times. Oh, that's so good. Uh, we'll also take the Alter Smooth Stone. Remove a card from the deck. Definitely get a strike out of there. Uh, Bottled Lightning. Pump up choose a skill card. Add that card to your opening hand. I'm almost certainly going to put this on charge up, but is there any other option? There isn't. Charge up. And that looks like it for us basically i could take the multi-beam and then just gain the money from it but then i have a multi-beam in my deck that i don't necessarily want there oh. all right there's also a new potion here accelerate all potions uh, cards and stasis accelerate just reduces their turn timer by one by the way just in case you're unfamiliar oh. ouch at the very least, I'm healing as I enter the boss fight. Ooh! Can I do this? I think I can do this. Oh, that was bad, though. The this in question I'm asking wh whether I can do is fight the enemies after this. So fight the gremlin knob as well as the taskmaster. I think I can. Also going to use an attack potion here, actually. 
it's important I get that kill. Okay. Yeah, otherwise I miss out on the ability to use Guardian Quell here. All right. Fight for victory. Definitely charge up. Definitely bent steam. Definitely prismatic beam. Probably prismatic beam on the back line. Oh, probably vent steam on the back line, I mean. So the second card I play here is played twice. Or I can just short myself one card, so I double play my next card. This is only 18 damage to double play. That's pretty weak. Looking for something like Guardian Quirl here. No, that's not Guardian Quirl. Double up on Ruby and then play Bronze Armor afterwards. Play a defense. Line up a bunch of damage of the back line. Don't need any of those. So we get to keep the strength at the end of the turn because of the artifacting. And we prevent the vulnerability coming in from the Gremlin knob. Great. And now we've got enough damage to comfortably face off against the Taskmaster. So what, we lost 6 HP in this combat total? I actually think most of that was last combat, so hell yes. Uh, sack of gems upon pickup, add 5 random gems to your deck. You know exactly what I'm going for here. Uh, take all those. Vent steam, yeah, I just need places to put the gems now, so I'll take another vent steam. Alright, let's enhance. Okay, so bauble beam. Performs multiple times the sockets in it. So we want to socket it with really rare stuff like Onyx. Gain one artifact, lose one HP. So I'll lose three HP whenever I play that, unfortunately. But it'll be worthwhile. Uh, do I want to draw three cards whenever I play Bauble Beam? Bauble Beam seems like it should be a setup mainly. I'll put Garnet in it. Leave all of the enemies vulnerable three times over. Okay, so I also have another Prismatic Beam. That's just going to get two card draw, definitely. That's been working really well with the other Prismatic Beam. Not interested in rocking the boat on that one. Uh, two Rubies in the Vent Steam as well. And another Momentary Dex in Twin Slam. Hell yeah! Now, I do heal 25 entering the boss fight, so I'm... Pretty interested in upgrading a card here. Ball Beam is the most interesting one to upgrade so that I get an extra artifact and extra vulnerability applied to all enemies. Interestingly here, I can play Ball Beam. It'll give me artifact and that artifact protects, uh, protects me from the negative effect of Hyper Beam. Means I can't get my charge up out though. And it only deals 50 damage to the bronze automaton. I'm gonna use a skill potion, see if I get any draw here. I I get Citrine, that's fine. Because now I Citrine. I can't double play charge up, unfortunately. So does that mean yeah, one of them just exhausts? I was hoping the other one was gonna go into my deck. So I should have double played a different card. Ordered that turn differently somehow. Guardian, return to post. No, Automaton. Your time is done. Hell yeah, that's a lot of damage. All right, now do I want a bronze armor in order to keep one strength? No, I just defend. Keep myself perfect in this combat so far. I'll take Orbork as well. I'll just naturally play it for two strength. Hmm. So I just play all of these, right? So that I can cycle the Joker card, right? 
right? I've just, I've got to know why I'm doing it so I can focus on the Joker card at the right times. I can probably protect myself. Yeah, just with the defend and the ward. I should have used the twin slam first, but it wasn't necessary, clearly. Double playing Revenge Protocol would actually be like a pretty big play here. With the amount of strength we have, double playing Guardian Coil is also really good. I would double play Floating Orbs, but having two Floating Orbs in the deck at the same time is actually just going to get really annoying. Because then I'll have so many Orb Slams that I won't know when to play them or if to play them, that kind of thing. Bye, Bronze Automaton. <clears throat> Three quests, the quest log, 103, and pick up Walker Claw, no, Anchor, Old Coin, Dead Branch, Refracted Beam, Walker, yeah, not interested. Uh... Here, probably another Quartz. Fast forward, accelerate all contents. Really? We still haven't got anything here that I'm interested in taking. I'm really sad about that, actually. All right, remove two cards from the deck. That actually might be the best thing that we can do here at this point. And the cards we want to remove might actually be like Aquamarine and Sapphire. Just because I'm not going to find something to socket. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six... Yeah, six more things in while still using Gem Finder, if I want to use Gem Finder at that point, right? Um, they also don't do too much. But they can be socketed is the thing. They're easy to remove from my deck. Yeah, I, I just remove the strikes. Don't need the extra energy. Don't really want to be brought back to life. Because I don't think it'll occur. All right, massive shapes at the end of the run. <clears throat> this is going to be wild. So there's an ability to get an early shop. I do have a lot of money, but this one has three rests as well as three elites. Hopefully one of these question marks is a shop because I want this path. All right. Unfortunately, kind of a obvious turn right there. Everything just is extremely straightforward. Do I play Gem Finder here? Ooh, Prismatic Beam. Great. More things to socket, and rubies are really good. But I don't have that many setup cards left, so maybe I take draw cards. Oh, but I have a lot of draw cards already in the deck. I'll take another ruby, though. If only I didn't have this Velvet Choke, I would be generating a lot of shivs as well. Oh well. It's what I've got. Not much is really uh, liable to change that at this point. <clears throat> Nothing on all of those. We'll take my lumps though. I double played the wrong card. This is the price we pay. Very thankful that I can get through that without actually ending up taking any damage. Another gem finder. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself at this point. This is kind of masochistic to add way more gems to my deck than I ever have any hope of using. I don't know. I kind of like it how it's going. Walker Claw. That now gives me money to take, but I, I don't know if I will ever be able to spend all of the money that I have. I'm taking Bronze Armor so I can keep my strength more commonly. Skittering Voidlings. Fight the Voidlings or sprint to the staircase. Fight them, obviously. So I can actually double play Bauble Beam, applying six vulnerable to all enemies as well as gaining six artifacts. That's pretty ridiculous right there. Whistle Beam's also a great pickup. 
Okay, Guardian Coil is pretty good. I mean, Guardian Coil should probably go first. Because I definitely have lethal thereafter anyway. All right. Uh, fight the Nightmare Alpha. You look around the room, the room looks darker than before. You turn to see the Nightmare. This is no ordinary Nightmare. It feels like it's protecting something. I'm super interested in doing this. So the Nightmare Alpha has reality shift and also has mirror effects based on how many of the keys that you've unlocked. So I have the Emerald Key, so it's got the Emerald Mirror. Nightmare Alpha will be more powerful. Thankfully, I don't have any other keys at this point in time. Uh, after taking 50 damage a single turn, the Nightmare will change its intent to a 5x5 damage attack and then shift reality, forcing me to end the turn. It has two strengths, so it'll be a 7x5 attack. Uh, I'm going to use the Strength Potion because this is actually going to be a rough fight. Pretty good opening turn. Is there anything else I desperately want to do here? I don't think so. Cool. Right. Drop all of those. Uninterested. <clears throat> Five by four this turn. Neat. So vent steam is... I mean, like, there's nothing I can do except for just attack as much as I possibly can right now. The enemy is definitely going to change intent here, but they're changing to a 5x5, five five, so literally they're just hitting me one more time. Uh, but it allows me to get a couple hundred damage in. What?! My second attack from the Joker card got cancelled. Really?! Oh, that's... That's nasty. That's real nasty. I guess I'm doubling up on Vent Steam then. No! The Joker card didn't even let me double up my next card. So it cancelled my double up. And just didn't let me... Oh my god. Skip next turn is not great for us, unfortunately. If we still had an artifact in this deck. So Bobble Beam. After Bobble Beam, it'll be a great idea. Yep, this is where stuff gets really annoying. I need the ward, I need to defend, need to defend, and I think I also just dropped bronze armor here. So this attacks for 16, 16 by... Actually, I need to use this. I did not think that was going to shift the enemy. What happened there? 16 by 3. The enemy was vulnerable. That's what happened. Damn it. Alright, I'm leaving the ability to double my next thing. Or I could double up on curl up and I'd be defensive for the next turn. Because doubling up on damage is actually really bad for us. But if I double up on... No, wait. Hang on. Is Velvet Choker going to choke me and prevent the Joker card? Is that what happened? Huh. No, okay. Velvet Choker is one of the soft chokes, right? It doesn't instantly prevent your turn. Polybeam is a lot of damage right now. So now I just have defensive mode up for this turn. Bronze Armor Hyper Beam is the best thing that I can do this turn for damage. Hyper Beam is 86. 86 is 30 plus 56. Damn it. So it will transform the enemy's intent to 5 by 7, which is actually 7 by 7. 7 by 7 is 47. So it's actually a lot more incoming damage if I do that. Um, that's pretty annoying. That said, I gain... The two artifacts at the end of that turn. And in doing so, I get to keep two decks and two strength. <clears throat> putting me in a pretty good position. Okay, I can't double play Bauble Beam or anything like that.
I don't want to change the enemy's intent, so kind of just have to suck it up this turn. I'm going to get construction form into the deck because I'm, I'm terrified that I'm dead. I'm terrified that I've died and I just don't know it yet. So 27... 27, 3. Oh my god, I'm literally one damage over where I want to be. 24, 4. No! Wow, I can't play any of those. That's so awful. The enemy has 80. This is... 81 damage. And the rest are just higher. Yeah. That's awful. Resource all gems. It's random enemy for each gem in those cards. Mm. I'll take Compile Package. It's probably the safer option here. Just try and look for something super defensive. Okay, Construction Form. For two turns, you cannot lose HP or play attacks. I think I can prevent the you cannot play attacks debuff by playing it here. No? Oh, okay. So you cannot play attacks. It's not a debuff, so I can't artifact my way out of that. That's really annoying. I should have played Prismatic Beam first there as a result of that. Well, as a result of that, in anticipation of that, but I couldn't have known that was going to be the case. These aren't great options. Take Orb Walker. Can't play Walker Claw here, unfortunately. I can double up on Orb Walker at the very least. Myself full strength this turn. I'm terrified that we're now dead. Like, I don't know if I'm capable of blocking enough here now. Uh, yeah, let's... Let's be super defensive here. So it's, it's Curler, Sapphire, Vent Steam, twice. Wait, I couldn't even take damage that turn. Damn it. But I can't play attacks that turn either. So. Like, I can stall as long as I want in this fight with extra defense modes and stuff like that, but that's not going to help me win at all. Enemy has so much HP. I think I'm now dead. Right? <clears throat> 42 incoming damage. Uh, we block for 1821. 1821 is 40. 1821 is 49. So we have 2 HP left over. But I can't attack the enemy with any of my attacks this turn because then the enemy just takes their turn and kills me instantly. I mean, I can hit you with the bauble beam, but if I hit with the bauble beam, I lose three HP. I go down to 18, 18, 36 is enough to knock me over. Hang on. 18, 18, 36. So how's three more HP than that saving me? I'm on 39, right? Yeah, I'm on 39. I'm already dead. Yep, so this is the most damage I can deal. That. Goodbye, cruelest world. The fact that our attack got interrupted that first time put us like 100 damage. 100? Probably like closer to 60 or something like that. Uh, behind the 8-ball. The real problem is that this deck can only do... It's built to build those giant attacks. And because, you know, Hyper Beam, the multiple hits on the Prismatic Beam, multiple hits... Like, Ball Beam is basically one of the only cards I can actually play. Couldn't play Guardian Whirl, could play Stasis, although that's Ethereal and I didn't play it once, so it was out of the deck. Could play Twin Strike. So I was, I was really limited in which cards I could play because I had so much strength and because the enemy was just going to stop my turn if I did it. But 
the reason that was a problem for us was actually just because I didn't have enough defense. There were too few defensive cards in the deck to defend myself heavily and then attack the enemy, which is ultimately how we really would have wanted that to go down. That's okay, though. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been slayed this by a modded. This has been the character to garden. Run with infinite spire. All of the links that you need for modding the game yourself and getting these mods are in the description down below. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.